Ahoy hoy, this is Michaela from Team Retro, where we like retro games and we like the devices that bring them to us. So recently, Steam's beta builds are testing a UI that is very similar to the Steam Deck. And this is meant to be a replacement for their big picture mode. And so this has inspired me to go back to using Windows on my Ambernic Win 600. A device that I normally use Steam OS on. And one of the caveats of me using Steam OS is I can't control the TDP like I could in Windows mode. And I did a whole video on how to set up that experience and I'll leave a link in the video description just in case you need to figure out how to set up TDP controls on your Win 600. So this video is going to assume that you have already done that. And so I'm going to show you how to get this UI experience. And I'm also going to showcase some games that work really well based on how you adjust the TDP. So the goal here is to take our Ambernic Win 600 and get as much performance as we can and save as much battery life as we can. And as an added bonus, if we're playing lower powered games, then the fan won't kick off as much. So let's jump right in and let's get to work. So at time of recording, this is in a beta build, so we need to go into our Steam settings in order to turn this UI on. And then once we're there under the account tab, we're going to go ahead and opt into the Steam beta. So you're just going to toggle from opt out of beta programs to Steam beta update, and then go ahead and press OK. And from that point, Steam will download the beta and then restart. Now we need to go into the desktop shortcut and go into properties. And under target, we're just going to add dash gamepad UI. And then once we've done that, go ahead and click apply and then click OK. Now, whenever we use that shortcut to open Steam, it's going to kick us right into that Steam Beta Big Picture interface. And it's going to look very much like a Steam Deck. You're going to have a lot of the same options. From here, if you hold down the Home button, you will get the Steam menu very similarly to on a Steam Deck. And then from there, you can access a whole bunch of settings, but including the ability to sleep and restart from this UI. So as you could see here, I was able to put my Win 600 to sleep. And if I hit the power button to wake it, it will wake right back into that interface as though we were a Steam Deck. And we're not running SteamOS here. We are running straight Windows with this interface. Now, there are a couple of caveats here. If you tap on the Home button, you'll get the Xbox Game Bar. You will not get the Steam menu. You have to hold down the button in order to get the Steam menu. And unfortunately, this means that as of right now, you cannot enter the Steam interface in game. Also, if you are using power control panel and you hit the hotkey to adjust the TDP, you may end up temporarily leaving the game and going into big picture mode. But in order to do this, you can hit the Windows button and then just tap the icon for your game and you'll be all set. You can begin gaming again. Now, another piece of advice that I would give is don't adjust the TDP until you have booted up your game. And then before you close out of your game, switch the TDP back as high as it can go. I suggest you switch it back to 15 watts. And I suggest this only because I've noticed that if you keep the TDP low, navigating menus and booting up programs does become unusually slow on this device. On other devices that have TDP controls, I have not had this problem, but the Win 600 is a beast all its own. 
But enough about that, let's get into some PC gaming here, and you could see at a 5 watt TDP at 60 frames per second, Sonic Mania seems to be running very well, and this is an example of a PC game that you can play at low power on this device and squeeze out a little bit of extra battery life. Here we have Ori in the Blind Forest running at a 9 watt TDP and we actually drop the refresh rate down to 40 frames per second here. And the result is some very nice, very smooth gameplay. This is quickly becoming a game that I'll just pick up and play and enjoy in short bursts and it's pretty fun. Now for NES collections like the Disney Afternoon Collection, I tended to keep this at a 9 watt TDP just because it gave a little extra oomph for navigating menus which tends to draw a little bit more power than playing the game itself. That said, most retro game collections that you can get on Steam will run at a 9 watt TDP with very little issues. Also in the realm of games that'll run great under a 9 watt TDP is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge as well as Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles The Kawabunga Collection. You're going to find with this system that most 2D and indie games will run very well under this specific TDP settings and will increase your battery life just a little bit. Going further into my Steam library with Capcom Arcade Stadium, I actually had to turn the TDP up to 12 watts just because navigating the menus getting into the games is kind of graphics intensive. And sometimes while navigating the menus, the frame rate can dip down to 20 frames per second and cause a little bit of lag. However, there was a recent update that I haven't checked out yet that allows for you to select from a more basic menu. And if that menu is less power hungry, then you can probably bring this down to a 9 watt TDP. Now this a la carte collection goes on sale quite often. So if you can snag all of these games for $20 or less, then this is slightly better than trying to emulate just because you'll have baked in rewind functions as well as CRT filters and the ability to play this as though you were playing it on an arcade cabinet. Moving on to emulation, I tried setting up a front end called Retrobat on the Win 600, and I would not recommend doing this. Yes, it's a nice little front end. Yes, you can download some themes and bezels, but this ends up hogging all of the Win 600's resources. And so if you try lowering the TDP even while playing low end emulation, 
Having Retrobat still running in the background will chug your system resources and even Game Boy games will become unplayable. And then when you try to hit the hotkeys to change the TDP back, things just get even messier and more often than not you're probably going to have to restart the entire device. And this is definitely a problem that's specific to running Retrobat. On the Win 600, I found that in other devices, Retrobat ran fine, but for this system, I think it's just a little too underpowered for something like that. Because I found if I ran RetroArc without a front end, I didn't have any of those issues. I was able to drop the TDP to 5 watts, and the gameplay was buttery smooth. For at least the lower end systems anyway, which means I wouldn't recommend trying any type of front end on the Win 600. I would recommend either just using RetroArc by itself, or going over to Botticera on a USB drive. Now you can get some mild switch emulation out of this device, but you need to kick the TDP up all the way to at least 15 watts. And even then, you're not guaranteed a smooth experience. Here is Pokemon Brilliant Diamond, which is a fairly easy game to emulate, and we're still getting dips to 20 FPS. Now, the game is not unplayable, but it's also not necessarily a buttery smooth experience either. And on top of it, at this TDP, you're only going to get a little over an hour of gameplay from a full battery. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend emulating Switch unless you have this device docked or you have a charger plugged in. And another emulation issue I found on the Windows side was with Nintendo DS. Now you're unfortunately limited to the RetroArc cores here, and at a 2x resolution, this system emulates very poorly on this device. I found that even at a 15 watt TDP, New Super Mario Bros. dipped down to a poor frame rate that pretty much made it unplayable. And these issues are less pronounced on the Botocera and SteamOS side, so it has to be the overhead that Windows is presenting here along with the limitations of the chipset and single channel RAM. And so some key takeaways here for those of you that either are interested in the Win 600 or already own one. When it comes to PC gaming, the Steam UI beta, along with the Power Control Panel app to control the TDP and the refresh rate, will help to give you a slightly better experience on Windows on the Win 600. However, for emulating some systems like Nintendo DS, your best bet is to probably stick with SteamOS or Botticero and just deal with not being able to adjust the TDP and dealing with the battery life that you're going to get. Or you can even possibly try out the new Jellos firmware, which does have built-in TDP controls. I haven't tested this out personally, but if you really are into altering your TDP settings, this may be an option for you. But let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you plan on using this Steam Deck beta on your Windows-based device? And if so, do you prefer being able to adjust the TDP on the fly for certain games? And please feel free to continue the conversation in the Steam Machine Discord. Link will be in the video description, and that's where you can find me hanging out. As Team Retrogue is now part of the Steam Machine Podcast umbrella. But that'll do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. And if this was helpful to you in any way, please be sure to like and subscribe. Until next time, bye for now, 
and don't stop believing.